Featuring more than 300 objects, the Design Museum's Waste Age exhibit showcases the possibility and the variety of circular economy innovation focused at the design stage. The Ellen MacArthur Foundation's Laura Franco Henau recently had the chance to visit the exhibition and to speak to one of the founders of the innovations on display. Safia Qureshi is the CEO and founder of Club Zero, a reusable solution for food and beverage packaging. So hi, Safia. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, I wanted to ask you first to kind of tell us a little bit more about yourself and the story behind Club Zero. Sure. I'm Safia. I'm founder and CEO at Club Zero. I'm an architect by background, so I love thinking about big scale operations that are citywide. Uh, Club Zero is really born, we used to be called Cup Club, so we won the New Plastics Economy Prize. Um, we rebranded Club Zero. It's uh, it's a zero waste system that's a citywide system enabling consumers to return packaging when they're finished to a network of return points when they're finished. So not throwing it away, but reusing and perpetuating this circular economy of reuse. That's our mission. And we want to really grow this as a city scale operation. And how does it literally work? So on on two levels. So if you think about it from a 20,000 foot perspective, from a city level, it's essentially a network of drop points that are established across the city, giving convenience to the consumer. So you can buy your food and beverage to go in reusable containers and return it to any of these points, not just where you bought it, but on the go. Then on the more sort of ground level, we work with major brands. So we've just recently done a partnership with Nestle. We have a partnership with Just Eat Takeaway on the food delivery side. And so we work with restaurants and cafes and we operate on a reuse system. We design reusable packaging that they can distribute and use. um, And that's specific to their requirements. So on both scales, if you think about it from 20,000 feet at a sort of infrastructure level, and then from a ground level, what that means for your everyday food and beverage to go. And I wanted to also ask you, where can we find, or if I, if, let's say I'm a user, I'm, I want sure. to use uh, Club Zero, Club Zero. Uh, what can I do? Is it an app yes. that I go and I just check where are the yep. collection points or the kind of like restaurants or, or places? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So there's, we've launched in King's Cross. We've done our first city urban sort of launch. So you can download Club Zero iOS, Android apps, they're available. You can find your nearest location. It's across food and beverage. You can also select those same restaurants in the Just Eat app and have those delivered to your home. So you have two options. It's either on the go, um, where you might be out and about, or you have the other alternative that if you're at home, you can have zero waste deliveries brought to your home. So we've just started. It's 20, you know, 25 isn't a huge number of locations, but we're growing. Um, we've just expanded into London's largest university campus, which is University to College London. Um, the partnership with Nestle took us to COP26. Um, and with Just Eat, we're really scaling up operations now across London. So you'll find more and more of this happening across the city. And remember, like uh, the, there are two areas that we work on, the 20,000 foot and then on the ground. So the 20,000 foot really requires a more strategic view on the city and partnerships with different city organizers and owners and estate owners. So there, th- these are the two ways that we establish the, the network work and the infrastructure as well as the packaging, the physical packaging itself with different brands. So yeah, we're going to be very busy in Q1. You'll see lots of things coming out. Nice. And I wanted to ask you, what's the most exciting challenge that you're facing at the moment? Ooh, um, I guess the exciting challenge, what we're doing is we're really focusing on what are the generic reuse packaging prototypes that need to be converted first, right? So if you look at some of the ones that we've started now, the 12 ounce cup is like your everyday product. It's it's what everybody uses. It's like the two-go coffee cup size. We have more sizes coming out. The 800 mil food container, that's like your standard food container size that you see across food deliveries. But there are immense amount of other packaging types, right? So we, what we're just making sure is we have like the archetype of each one, we convert that to reusables, we create those as your staples, and then we look at more sort of specific packaging types that might be more uh, required by specific brands. But right now our focus is looking across a number of brands and identifying which ones are the most commonly used ones and then building those out. So that's that's the exciting bit. It's just finding those patterns and finding where the volumes lie because then you become, you know, you become the standard. 
And that's what I want to do. We want to become the standard. You walk into any food takeaway, quick service restaurant, you see the same packaging type in single use. We will be the reusable version of that. So standardization is really Correct. one of the key factors as well. Correct, right? yes. yeah. What are the next key things that you think need to happen in the circular economy space that would help your business scale? So the first thing I would say is what I've described to you is an immensely ambitious plan, right? This is this is basically saying to across multi stakeholders from, you know, government, city owners, estate owners, brands, recyclers, and then consumers. Uh, this is an infrastructure play at all levels. It requires an awful lot of operations. You require a lot of funding for that sort of stuff. This isn't like sort of small scale operations. You're thinking of the likes of Tesla. You're thinking of the likes of Uber. So what we need is adequate financing in this space. We need the opportunity to grow it, but not grow it so incrementally that it's barely noticeable, but grow it in the way that we can within this decisive decade and deliver.